All right, folks, I want to welcome our guest tonight. It's none other than Todd Standing. Welcome to the show, Todd. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. It's my pleasure. I've been excited to talk to you. I've actually talked about you with so many people that have been on my show. Most recently, probably was Les Stroud. We had a 30-minute conversation about you when I had Les on the show, and I'm, I'm stoked that you actually came on the show. So I want to get right into it. Most people know about your work and the things that you've done in the Bigfoot community, but I want to talk about something that popped up on my radar just recently and some of the videos that I saw you posted about the plan to kill a Bigfoot. Can we talk a little bit about that and how that came about and sort of what that process has been for you and where you are on that subject at this very moment? Uh, it, well, what happened was uh, a group of uh, people that really have an excellent budget and uh, they have all the, the means required to, to go and pull off a potential uh, assassination of a Sasquatch, bring back a body. They, they built all their information on me. So they'd spent years watching me they learned from me. They found an area where there was Sasquatch based on my information. So, uh, and the plan that they had looked, when I first looked at it, it was, it was scary because these are some high-end people that really had an excellent plan of action. They had all the equipment. I'm talking helicopters. I'm talking high ground. They had everything all planned. They, they have thermal images of Sasquatch. It would be totally, would blow the world away. So they really had the equipment to do it. And it it scared me in that I knew that they weren't going to be able to go in there and, and just shoot one. They were going to have to take on the whole family. I know what happens when you go into a family. Like It's no different than gorillas. When you come back with one baby gorilla, most of the family, if not all of them, were assassinated to bring that baby home. Diane Fossey was, you know, really uh, passionate about teaching people that. So initially, I, I got into it and I started talking about it. And I always, I always want to, it's really important to me to look at both perspectives as hard as it is. I learned this in, even with the native people, you know, bury the hatchet, you, you make peace with your enemies, not with your friends. So I really looked at it. I, and, and then I made the video because I have so many expeditioners and colleagues and friends. I just made the video, make it public. I like to be transparent just to keep an open mind. And the backlash was profound. People were very angry about it. But what happened was all my colleagues got back to me and I'd spent a week and then I, and then I actually showed my personal private colleagues the plan and like dude this is not going to work because there's they're missing this they're missing that they're missing all these things that you know about that you don't go public with so I came back the week later and I did the, the follow-up video that nobody's watching <laughs> and uh explained that I I couldn't do it there's no way I could go in and, and harm a Sasquatch it would destroy everything that's that that I hold dear I literally leave the Sasquatch habitat and get teary-eyed because I'm leaving my friends for the season. You know what I mean? When the snow falls, I, I leave all winter and I get really like, I get emotional because of all the amazing things that we've done and how they chose to interact with me. Even like all the way back into the Survivor Man shows, literally 2014 and 13, when they came around, they interacted with Survivor Man so much. I remember leaving with them. I'd be like, I'd be like, I'm going to miss you here. You know, and Les like, what's up? What's the matter? They came around, they were interacting. They were so good, you know? So I, it was it was a good exploration for me, but now what they have to realize is they have shown me the plan, and I am aware of where it is, and now I'm going to destroy that plan. That's that was the follow up video. Is sorry guys, I have an expeditioner out in your area. We're gonna be there the day. We're gonna be there a month before you ever do this. We're gonna be there a month after. I'm gonna make sure you have no chance of ever harvesting a Sasquatch. So now it really is me versus them, and they react. They were astonished. Because these guys are big game hunters. Uh, they just, they, they kill and they just have that mentality. No disrespect to it. It's just, they have that mentality, just animals or animals, kill them, harvest them. And, there, and there's, there's a good 25% of people that are fans of mine. They say, yeah, go shoot one, go bring it back. Because the overall good it could do might outweigh the negativity that comes with it, right? But uh, anyway, no, it's just, it's not going to happen. I won't, I won't allow it to happen. So now it's Todd Standing versus them. And uh, and they're pretty they're pretty upset, but uh, their their option now is make peace with me, and let's go and let's let's because they they have the equipment, they have the money. Let's do a long term research study. They have the, the the helicopters, the thermal equipment, the budget to do it. So uh, and they're they're reconsidering that. Well, they're, they're reeling right now because they literally have paid for helicopters and and airplane tickets for people to come out. All these different people that were going to come in and. It's not going to work. They know it's not going to work anymore. So now they're trying to reassess, maybe pick a different date, maybe verse me a little more, but they're, they're going to lose. And uh, because 
another thing I've realized is I don't tell people everything. There's a lot more that Sasquatch are capable of than, than is out there. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna allow them to ever harm a Sasquatch. And uh, that's, it was a really good journey for me to take because you don't know till you're really, I was really faced with, man, you go get a body, be a part of it. And, and even, even when, when they got the body, like, hey, let's do everything your plan. Let's take the body your way. I don't care about the money. These guys are filthy, stinking, rich, like, well, these are oil people from Canada. The oil that comes out of here, I mean, it's like Texas, you know, these guys don't ever, they made, they made, they, they laughed because we made a couple extra billion last month because we jacked the gas prices in, in one province in Alberta and we made a couple billion, you know, just playing around with numbers, having some fun. We woke up one day, make a couple extra billion. So these guys don't, they never think about money. And uh, honestly, not much in my mind too, when it comes to the reality of, of how important this discovery is. So uh, yeah, there'll be no, I, I'll make it very clear. I'm, I'm very, very no kill and I always will be. And, uh, but I always listen to other people's perspectives and, and I would appreciate the opportunity to, to try to uh, illuminate people to the reality. This is not a hunt for even a man. This is no man has ever been in perfect equilibrium in the wilderness, like perfect, like in at levels where just even, even understand this, they, they use telepathy, telepathy is very real. If you don't understand telepathy is real, you're in the dark ages now. All the universities, everybody acknowledges that telepathy is real. These, so these guys are literally communicating with each other. You know, we, the military, they have those headsets, they're communicating. Sasquatch are in each other's minds communicating with one another. Never mind, they, they're born and raised, they know the ecology, they're, they're the best hunters and trackers that have ever lived. And, who, and, and who's to say if they can, we're almost the same species. We're literally nothing more than a subspecies of what Sasquatch is because the DNA shows we've successfully bred with them and produced viable offspring. I have that DNA research right here, you know, right in front of me. So that's happened. That's a legit scientific fact confirmed by people like Jeff Meldrum. So if we're the same species, who's to say they can't get in our heads? And that's a whole other level, right? Now, and even, even things like uh, uh, the, the uh, infrasound that knocks you out. I've been knocked out by infrasound. Are you guys prepared to take that on? You know, so I think, I think the loss of life, that fight might have been lost by these people, you know? So as they can be pissed at me, but I'll tell them right straight. I think I saved more lives than anything. I'm talking about your lives, right? So, and who knows? Like this is, I remember uh, playing with a, I, I was uh, working with a, a King Cobra snake and they do that thing where they, they you know, you, you get it to watch your hand and watch your hand. And sometimes a snake will become alert to the hand as part of your body. You never want them to do that. Cause once they realize the hand is the body, they'll come after you. And, and for me with the Sasquatch, when they realize that hand where it reaches to and where you are and where you live, do you want to go out in the wilderness now when you've been harming and killing? You know what I'm saying? It can come back to you. They think they live up there safe somewhere far away, but this is not, this is not some animal you're dealing with. Their, their, their connectivity goes all the way into everywhere and everything. So, uh, you know, remote viewing is very real. So they, they, you think you're immune, you go shoot a Sasquatch. You shoot, you shoot your son or my son, I'm coming for you. You know what I mean? I'm going to go hell and high water. That's the way, that's the way we are. And I can't see them being any different. And boy, I don't want to go to war with a, a being that can do the things they do. So I feel very, uh, I feel happy and very confident in uh, the results of that whole situation. Well, I did watch both videos. I watched the first video and I, I have to admit, I left that video thinking, holy shit, did he just say he's going to help these people kill a Sasquatch? Because yeah. when I watched the first video, I sort of got the feeling that you were actually considering this at, at, and on some level. And then mm -hmm. I went and watched the second video and you, you made it absolutely clear. And that's kind of why I wanted to start with that on the show, because I wanted people to understand, you know, clickbait and people are going to watch the first video and they'll watch the first five or six minutes and say, oh, yeah, well, here's Todd Standing talking about killing a Bigfoot. Yeah. And that's not exactly accurate. So I appreciate you clearing that up and, and talking about it. Let's talk about. Well, and rem Go ahead. Remember the other thing too, the reality, they were watching that video and I was in negotiations with them that week. This is one of those things. Uh, you, you watch the Avengers in the beginning, uh, Black Widow is there in a chair. And she's getting her ass kicked and they come in, they go, she goes, I'm, these idiots were telling me everything. They told me everything, everything. It was one of those first time in my life, keep your friends close and your enemies even closer. That's what I had to do. It was very important to keep them close, get them to trust me. And, uh, and, and, and now I have the ability to completely destroy their plan. So it works. And, and for the bigger picture, 
it's not about clickbait it's about protecting the sasquatch and and that was my priority and that even going public like that and them going wow we're really convincing him maybe i never said yes but i really kept my doors open and i really let it you know and the and the truth is too i really was I, again to know your own enemy right to, to make peace with your enemy really think like them and uh, I, just, I just went on that journey and uh you know and I, i'm grateful for it it's definitely the best way to get the information right is sort of be behind enemy lines and figure out yeah. what the plan is so you can eventually foil the plan and that's yeah. one of the things that I, when i had jeff meldrum on my show jeff and i talked about dna and we talked about proving this species as being real outside of being just a novel species, something that's actually physically real. And I asked Dr. Meldrum at the time, you know, is DNA enough? Is it going to be enough? And he said, unequivocally, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a body. And that's something I struggle with. I, I've, I've definitely struggled with that. As many people as I've talked to that have had encounters with these things over the years, and I've had what I believe to be my own encounters, I struggled because I want this to be proven, not for just the world, but for myself, because I want those answers myself, right? So I guess my question to you is, and I know the struggle has to be real for you. You've, we've talked about it already. How do you come to terms with the fact that I believe that there's got to be a body that's got to be produced, pro probably even two before scientists are going to say, okay, this is a real species. Are, are you still on the train that we're going to be able to find one of these things that has passed away naturally or eventually do you think somebody's going to drag one of these things in after it's been shot in here you go world i'll tell you uh so uh quite a few years ago i shot a piece of footage of sasquatch uh, it's kind of a long story just quickly I was in the water and a, a grizzly bear was stalking me to, to kill me and the sasquatch came out when i was in a river and i was filming them and they came out and they were trying to tell me to turn around and look at the bear who was stalking me to kill me and then, and then when the bear came and charged at me, I spun around the water, dropped my camera, pulled my gun out, did, did what I had to do to keep myself alive. But I'm telling you, that piece of footage would have convinced the world. I would say, when I get eyes blinking, nose flare, like I had teeth, I had the Sasquatch, his foot was on a rock, I could see the mid so joint, I saw the toes moving. I remember looking at it going, Meldrum's gonna lose his mind, there it is, the foot, the joint, everything. I must have had about two minutes of footage in full HD, cloudy day, perfect lighting conditions. And they were moving and grunting and making sounds. It was Jake. And uh, I lost that footage. But I'll tell you, when it, when that footage happens again, and these species, this species is real, my success is mind-blowing. Every year, we're getting better and better. We're growing. What you saw in 2013 with Survivor Man, what I did with him is I would whoop that. Like My research is infinitely better now. I'm superior so far superior to that i believe this discovery is coming in the next four years because i will get a piece of video evidence i'm willing to do whatever it takes and it's it is going to happen and if science can you imagine so i come forward with such hd footage like this makes my other stuff look like just garbage the most crystal clear amazing foot, footage of sasquatch i'll get 10 million people on board those 10 million people will turn into 20 will turn into 30. science can kiss my ass they can be at the back end of this because even right now I'm growing, I must have 50 people, at least half of those that have come out on physical expedition with me that have live interacted or seen a Sasquatch. Where are you? How come you're not coming out and seeing a Sasquatch with me? Got to book yourself an expedition, my friend. It's yeah, what I do. I I what, what do I say? Do don't, don't take my word for it, for it. Come out with me and I will show you a Sasquatch. And the day Fish and Wildlife goes, let's shut this, let's shut this punk up. Give him a three month ecological survey. I'll get out there and show them a Sasquatch. And there's the court case is not done in case you're unaware. I went to court. I went to court with a knife and they showed up with guns. What I did is I learned my lesson. Next time I go into court, I'm showing up with a bazooka. So I'm going to smoke them. The whole purpose of court is to force fish and wildlife to come out with me and I'll show them a Sasquatch. Like I've been doing, like I did with Survivorman, like I did with Jeff Meldrum. The list goes on and on, right? So the discovery is coming have profound faith in it there. And there are other people out there. Somebody's going to do something. Something's going to happen. We can find a body. We human beings are encroaching on their habitat. Something, some miracle will happen. All we have to do is just wait for it. And I, I already made a promise. Uh, it was about a year ago. I said four years. So I got three years and the way things are going right now, I'll get that HT footage or something even more amazing will happen. I'll, I'll have the other point, my expeditioners too, 
is to get these people that are incredibly gifted that keep coming out with me. One day I want to film <clears throat> one of them having a Sasquatch walk out and take an apple right out of their hand, like HD footage right there. Cause there's no ego with me. I have, I have these expeditioners that are coming out and they're going on their own journey. Now they're having their own. There's one, one guy, Matt, as an example, <clears throat> he's got this 11 year old Sasquatch that has 11 inch track. It loves him. He's a very special guy. He's been obsessed with Sasquatch since he was little and that Sasquatch likes him. They have these incredible interactions. I'm like, dude, just go on your own, go make it, make the discovery. It's, anybody that's that's why my movies out there that's why i do my videos i'm trying to educate people i want somebody somewhere to take it to that next level to 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 extend that olive branch and connect with the sasquatch our our matrix where's our neo right i'm i'm morpheus that's all i feel like seriously seriously and maybe maybe someday morpheus would have taken on those 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 agents but uh, I feel like i'm just i'm using everything i can to teach the, the movie discovering bigfoot is not for anybody it's for all of us all that footage is for all of us. i can't tell you how many times people hug me and, man i saw sasquatch and and you show jeff meldrum and john Marion smart and they cry on me like man i can tell people now i can hold my head up because because those people know and those people have seen it and there's the footage and this is what i saw so uh something's gonna break somewhere i've i've, I've met too many people i have too many conversations going on it's such a big deal and uh it's this don't don't lose heart. I remember John Bernagel told me in uh, about five years before he passed away, when I first met him, he said that he would really like to see this discovery happen in his lifetime. And of course, of course, it'll happen in your lifetime. It didn't. And I think of Grover Krantz and all these, even Jeff Meldrum. He's I just saw him. You know, he I love the guy. He's amazing. But he's got heart problems. He's not he's not he's not 50 anymore. You know what I mean? So how long is Jeff Meldrum, the, the amazing Jeff Meldrum, how long is he going to be with us? Will it be in his lifetime? And uh, time matters. It really, really matters. So I, I fight for this. I bleed for this. And I work with dozens of other people that just, this has to happen. This is, and I am a full-time Sasquatch researcher. I don't know how many people can say that. This is all I do. I make films, I make shows, I make videos, all for the discovery of Sasquatch. I wake up every morning and I hurry my ass out of bed because I got to meet that person or do that thing or teach somebody. It. You know what I mean? It's all about this incredible discovery. I want my children to grow up with a book, like, like one of those DK books about gorillas where it shows tree breaks and how tall they are and how fast they are, how, how big their hands are, their anatomy, their intellectual capacity. They're, they're, not, they're not an animal in the sense that they're going to get recognized as a people. Do you doubt that? A people. Send it. Land rights. That's probably the biggest issue. That's probably why it's been covered up. You can't go log on their land. They got, and you talk about an indigenous species. Nobody is more indigenous. Like these guys are naked, surviving, like feet up, no problem, complete equilibrium, you know? So, uh, but they'll have rights. How can we deny that to them? They're, they're the original indigenous species. And uh, I think that's the biggest uphill battle. This discovery is coming. One day they're gonna have a 4K mosquito drone, right? That flies on solar power. How are you gonna, how's the Sasquatch gonna hide from that? And if you don't think that's coming, you're not paying attention. I was there for the first drones 10 years ago. They're 50 times better now. And all this, like that technology, nobody votes on technology that happens every year. Phones are getting smaller technology, the, the, even the, even the uh, satellites and stuff, right? They can't hide. In fact, I think you gotta kind of laugh if you think, it doesn't matter how great they are. Eventually, something's going to break. Their record to date is nearly perfect, but something's going to give, you know, something's going to give. I definitely agree. And I, I've got to get this out of the way because I will be honest. I had a conversation with Les Stroud when, when Les was on the show. And I talked about some of the evidence that you've put forward in some of the videos. And I don't want to spend a ton of time on it, but my listeners are going to kick my ass if I don't mention this on the show <laughs> because I've got you here. And when Les and I had the conversation, I, I said to him, point blank, I said, Todd Standing has the best HD quality evidence that Bigfoot exists on this planet that I've ever seen, or mm -hmm. he's the greatest hoaxer that's ever lived. Mm -hmm. And we had a conversation about that that lasted about 30 minutes. And, <laughs> and I have, and, and at the end of that, Les, Les was your biggest supporter in all of that. He's like, look, I've spent time with this guy. He is the yeah. real deal. He has boots on the ground. And he said, as far as his video evidence is concerned, I held those SD cards, the, the, the evidence in my hand. And he said, I saw nothing in that video that 
or any of those videos that would lead to lead me to believe that that evidence is faked. And I've, I've, I've said it on the show before that I thought that it's possibly that that stuff was faked, right? Yeah. Now, I've also talked to other people since I've talked to him. I interviewed Cameron Buckner last night for the show. And Cameron has met you and spent time with you and interviewed you. I can yeah. And said the exact same thing about you. So I will be um, I will be man enough to admit the shit I've said about you in the past. And mm -hmm. I have shifted that opinion because now I have had conversations with you. So let's talk a little bit about the videos and the things that you've produced in the past. For those mm -hmm. people that have those opinions that that stuff is an HD quality video of Sasquatch. What do you say to those people like me in that camp who had doubts about your footage? I, just, I uh, gosh, like I, uh, the, 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 the evidence that is against it is just ridiculously preposterous, right? You hear crap like, uh, cause Jeff investigated it in the very beginning. My dad dated a woman who owned a fabric store. So that proves them that's not true. My sister's a special effects mayor, but that's not true. It's all, it's all lies. And what, what, what you hear from them is why well, already proved him a fake, but Jeff would go, no, I need to hear it. And they go, why well, his sister's a special effects mix virus. No. She's not. And I, and I, and I proved that I can prove that, but uh, really I, it's, it's, it's frustrating. Even, even some of the, probably the dumbest thing I hear and it's, I'm sorry, it's ignorant. People put my head in the Sasquatch and I hear, I just heard it last couple of days ago. Some, I can't get over the way your, your head matches up with the Sasquatch. That's a uh, video five. It's Jake. And I did a video showing Jake's head is like, it's like this big. It's like that tall. And I conclusively proved it's like he's five times the size of my head and people are still all those proportions on my, I don't know what to say. Like when people, when people can't break the paradigm and you, and you know, you know what is profoundly in my defense is I take people out and there's when Jeff Meldrum saw a Sasquatch, he freaking well saw a Sasquatch man, like in three days with me. But wouldn't you expect that from a man who has eight videos public? Oh, nine, 10, 11, 12, all coming, my friend more coming. I'm never going to stop. And, and what John talked about, John was with me for longer than Jeff. He did uh, nine days straight with me. And John was like, he wouldn't even talk to me the first, I don't know, eight days. He was barely saying anything. He was so skeptical. He always had his arms crossed and he'd make funny faces. When he, when he did that last day's interview, I, I was lucky I had it on a, on a tripod because I literally would have dropped the camera where he's like, this is all real. This man's legit. I've heard every, like he did, he checked every backstory. This man was taking notes. He re-questioned me. And then he asked me about this. He asked me specific details about every video on and on and on lists and lists of it. And all he found was absolute profound truth in every single thing, because it's not a story. I was there. You can ask me a question. No one's ever asked me before. And I'll have you the answer that fast because I just go, oh yeah, that's what happened that day. Or this is what was going on. Cause it's all absolutely 100% factual. It's just, it's, and, and, you know, I, again, don't take my word for, for it. Come up like survivor, man, that dude, when he came out with me, he said, look, you're, you're I, I'm going to get famous for proving you're a hoax or a liar. I'm famous for proving that you're legit. And what did he do? He, he's survivor, man. He's a beast. He's so freaking tough. And the, the stuff we did back country. And he had so much faith in me. I was always, I was his guide. I kept him safe. You know, he was calm and, and never things like lost or like he would literally go, mm, let's go there. And we go that way. I go, OK, what's over? There's that and this. There's some breaks over there. He'd be like, dude, you've been everywhere. I know I'm I'm like boots. I know this whole area backwards and forwards. And I know one one hundredth as good as the Sasquatch do. But I'm legit out there. I would legit fight for this discovery. I think a special effects makeup artist. That I, that I spoke to from Wicca, who did like Lord of the Rings and stuff. He was going to give me a job. He's like, man, you're so amazing. It's clearly fake, but you're stuff. You're an incredible. I'm like, I can't, dude, I could never duplicate that. But he, at the end of the conversation, he said, well, you know what? If you are faking this, though, you're doing it to prove the species is real. And a bing, 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 bing. So this is what you're left with. If I am faking it, I faked it for species protection, for species recognition, and to teach people about the species, because I sure shit am finding tracks. I sure shit tell you that the structures and the breaks and the, and the sightings, like Jeff Meldrum, Jeff Meldrum will never, ever, ever, if you look at him and say, oh, that was some dude he had you tricked, Jeff was there. Like, you're in the hell of middle of nowhere. There's no dude smashing trees, busting the ground, like Sasquatch came around, interacted, 
and then showed himself to Jeff. That's what makes Jeff so special too, is people don't talk about that. Sasquatch said, look at this bitch. And he went right across that, that open area. And Jeff was standing right there. That Sasquatch was in 30 yards of him. And he let Jeff see him. That year I left teary eyed because they just showed themselves to a PhD, Jeff Melton. How brave were they? If Jeff would have had a gun, he would have blown holes in them, but, but they'd been watching Jeff for three days. And Jeff has been obsessed with this topic his whole life since he was a little nerdy boy. And uh, that's why they did it because they know, they know, they get it. So uh, we're just going to keep making this discovery happen. I, I, I am, uh, I'm, I'm so proud of the footage I have. I don't do expeditions so much like that anymore because it was, it was nearly killing me. Like I would nearly, I would, I come back from those expeditions and just lay down for three days and just get fed and sleep and, you know, recover. I, I would lose, you know, I'm lean and I'd lose 20, 30 pounds of muscle. Like it was like Navy SEAL training. I'd go out there and just annihilate my body. And I would, I would fail most times. One in 10 times I'd get success, you know, and all the effort and all the blood that I put into it. And see, nobody, nobody questions that anymore. Anybody who's been out with me, they know my skill set. They know I'm an excellent tracker. I had a, I had a, a U.S. Uh, ranger, the uh, Special Forces ranger dude come up with me, dropped his knife. He's like, oh, my God, I'll never find him. I'm like, dude, I'll backtrack. He goes, are you really that good? Two hours later, boom, there's his knife. Backtracked right to the spot. So it, you get it when you come out with me. That's, where, that's why Jeff and Les have so much faith because they've been out with me. They bled. Jeff Meldrum is a tough dude. When I took him out those, those years ago, Man, I, he never missed a step. He's one tough, awesome, amazing dude. And, and it go, you know, goes back to them too. Survivor Man's a freaking beast. He's, a, he's the godfather of survival TV. That guy is so tough. I couldn't do what he, there, you want to hear me say something? I couldn't do 10 days. If you did 10 days in the bush with me with no food, either I would die or the bear that tried to kill me would die. Like somebody's going to die. So he's, he's got that endurance body. Wait, like I'm, I'm 6'3", he's 5'10". I'm 220. He's like 180. And those little guys will kill you in the endurance. They'll people talk, talk about the rock and all these big dudes. Those little guys will smoke you every time they've got endurance for miles. If you're one of those little dudes and you're tough like that, I give you guys sprinters get killed. And it's, this is a long race. Everything you do is about the length of time. And those guys are those endurance monsters like survivor, man. I just, uh, I have so much respect for him. He asked me to do Survivor Man. I was like, I can't do that. You're a freaking animal, man. There's no way Survivor. Let's just start you out in seven days. Seven days, no food. Nope. That takes years off your life, you know? So, because I used to do that crap, but I'm not, I'm not built for that anymore. And, uh, and I don't need, that doesn't need to be the way I'm, I'm wiser now. When the stuff comes out about the success, they're taking apples now from me. They're making little cool structures for me. They're interacting with my expeditioners that are coming back over and over. I literally have like a, a full-time Sasquatch research center in, in Canada in the hottest spot I've ever found in the world where the Sasquatch are interacting with people. And I'm in every second week and someone else is in every second week. And uh, something's going something's gonna to break because uh, it's just, it's too much absolutely astonishing, amazing things happening for this research be excited get excited don't don't lose hope don't lose faith you know and even talking about my footage too i met uh, i met bob gimlin you know everybody called his footage fake in the beginning and it, it did the test of time and that's what you're doing the test of time i remember i remember he told me once he stood up on a table and talked to people at the sasquatch summit he says you know 20 years ago i was this man I saw a Sasquatch, he held up a picture of Jake, and this is a Sasquatch. He said, in 20 years, Todd, they'll be giving you little awards and stuff like this, but I remember how you treated me for 20 years. I was a liar and a fraud, just like you're doing to this man right here. History is repeating itself. And that's why you're coming around. You were, that's why everybody's going to come around because I'm not going anywhere. And I am telling the truth and the truth will set me free. And I am going to be transparent because it, it's made me a, a very happy person. Well, I do appreciate that more than you know, and I, I appreciate you explaining that and taking the time to address it. Let's talk about a couple of things that Les and I talked about that I wanted to talk to you about. I always interview people about their encounters, and I get these folks on the show that have these sort of out there experiences. And we're not necessarily going to go down that path of the woo and Bigfoot, but there's a couple of things that stuck out to me that, that Les shared with me. One of the things that happened was apples being taken on camera mm -hmm. while he was up there with you. Yeah. And there was really outside of just this little thing that came into the frame. It's like yeah. they just disappeared. 
And of course, he he shared with me later in the interview, he talked about his mind speak and his telepathic connection that he had with Sasquatch, I think on a couple of different times. Yes, yes. But let's talk about that. Just touch on it for a bit. You've spent time in the bush with these things, and you, mm-hmm. you, you're probably more boots on the ground than anybody I've ever talked to. What do you think about that type of interaction? Do you think there is more to these things? than just flesh and blood do you think there's sort of a paranormal aspect to these things and have you experienced any of that yourself um not not at all they're simple they're they're simply just that amazing two two examples well first of all i'll talk about the apple getting taken uh so the apple got taken on his second year out to radium that's when that apple got taken on camera they were taken the year before but we just didn't get a camera up there. And that was my, that was my little bro, Jacob, that took that. He's uh, at the time he was about 12. Now he's like 17. He's a monster. Now that's my, that's my Sasquatch. He took it, but uh, and in, in season one, Les wakes up and he goes, I heard the rock knocking. Like, so a Sasquatch woke him up rock knocking. And then he heard across the top of the mountain. What he heard, if you take a stick and you whip it really fast, it goes when a Sasquatch hits full speed, they will literally make a whipping sound as they go by like a car. That's how, and he's moving through dense terrain up on the side of a mountain where there's no flat ground and they do that. It's not paranormal. That's exceptional, incredible speed and ability, period. Another thing that I've seen them do. So, so that's all that happened with that camera is that, 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 that thing went off so fast, but Jake went, he hit that tree flying, grabbed that thing. He was on the ground and gone in two seconds. So all you would have heard if we would have woke up was a, you grab that thing, he's gone. He's just fast. Like they're they're super fast, super powerful. That's why I admire them so much. But another thing that talks about their paranormal, this is just skill. So people talk about them getting shot and then going in the middle of the field and disappearing, their tracks end. Okay, so that happened to me one year. So I'm I have this set up to, to find a to catch a Sasquatch, I'm on snowmobiles. They come out, they take the uh, the gifts that we give them, and Sasquatch starts walking. I'm gonna catch him. I'm on three of us on snowmobiles, he's not going anywhere. So tracks are running. Big spaces, right? Right in line perfectly. Suddenly they're walking. Whoa, so we slow down. They walk right into the middle of a field. Stop. What the bugger did? This is the best tracker in the world. That bugger started walking because you can't jump back into your tracks. He walked to the middle of the field. Then he walked back into his tracks, hit a tree, jumped from tree to tree to tree, and disappeared. And we actually found evidence of, the, first of all, the trees that he jumped on, the snow was shaken off of them. And then the other thing was once in a while, there would be two steps and then to the next tree. So we just got outdone. He wasn't, it's not paranormal. And when that happened, I knew there's this, I'm not going to say he disappeared. This is not fourth dimensional crap. I was just versing the greatest trackers that have ever lived. And he smoked me and they'll smoke you every time. They have 50 other things they do to evade. You're not following the greatest trackers in the world. They'll smoke you. But uh, that's why people think they're paranormal because people will do that. And give up and go, oh, you just disappeared. But it's not. They're just that smart. They're that good. They're that exceptional. And it's hard for us to understand because literally I'm at a track. Like there are people that are like so, like a good tracker is here. I'm up here. Then you get the old natives way up here. And you get the Sasquatch another level above them. So, and I've seen it every time I think I'm ahead. They're so far ahead. I thought I was ahead. You know what I mean? I'm so far behind. I thought I was ahead. So I don't even try to verse them anymore. The other thing I know too is the greatest trackers in the world play tracking games amongst themselves. Like they're versing me. They're looking at me like I'm just a complete ignoramus moron. Like, man, they were doing that stuff when they were two. You know what I mean? Like they're just owning me every way, shape or form. So I just try not to verse them anymore because uh, and it gives them respect. And that's that's really not the way to facilitate this discovery is to verse them. You don't verse nature. It's not man versus wild. That's horse crap. You try to survive within wild. These and and the approach I take that makes me so different is they're my teachers. And when I'm ready, when the student is ready, the master appears and gives me information. So I just go out there learning and studying. That's what I teach all my expeditions. Just learn and study. And and when you love nature and you love the wilderness, the teachers will come and and give that back to you, right? Is oh, so many people have like I love snowboarding, so I teach snowboarding pretty much for free. I just, I just have so much fun. I want people to love it the way I do. And that helps me understand the way Sasquatch love nature and they want us to love it because maybe we'll stop logging. Maybe we'll stop raping it. Maybe we'll stop taking care of the planet because the number one thing I know about this discovery is we're, we're having hard times right now, dude. This is bad. 
Democrats hate Republicans, you know, non-vaxxers, vaxxers, like we're in a bad place. This discovery can fix all of that. That's how big a deal this is. That's, that's actually what I'm teaching my expeditioners. I'm training them. So when the discovery is made, my 50 expeditioners can go teach thousands of people that are going to want to know about this incredible species. So I'm teaching people. So now I'm that, that Morpheus teaching everybody about the matrix. I took the pill. I, I, I know it. Sasquatch are real. So I'm teaching people as much as I can. And I have people in Georgia, Texas, New York State, Florida, you know, Washington State, all these teachers that I've taught that are ready when this discovery comes to go show everybody and to allow them to reconnect with the wilderness and with this incredible with these incredible beings, because they'll fix everything. They'll change things worse than COVID has ever damaged it. That's what is so important. And I, I see that that we are we are so domesticated and damaged and we take pills and we try to separate, but we're not separate from nature. We're from nature, need to get back to nature. And they're seeing that in the science. I see doctors telling people to go walk barefoot in the grass for Christ's sake. And it helps, you know, come out with me, drink the water, eat from the earth, get into the dirt and touch the trees. People go home and their lives are changed, you know, and it's a, it's a wonderful gift to be able to do that. And the Sasquatch can do it to levels I can't even imagine. My teachers can really heal this planet and, and they want to now. They're ready. Things are, I think things had to get this bad. So if, if the species is, is discovered and they are as amazing as I say they are, can you imagine how many people want to learn from them? I think a hundred million in the United States alone would be a conservative number, right? We're talking YouTube channels. We're talking social networking. Seriously, like I know it sounds crazy, but people need to know and I, and I want them to, to learn and I want them to reconnect to nature because it's, it's a beautiful gift and that's what they are. I want to talk to you about a couple of things while I have you here and you've had this experience that, that you've experienced with these things for so long. I want to talk about some tree structures and tree breaks and the wood knocking thing, right? I've, I've talked to so many people that have experienced that stuff. And I've even ran into things recently here on my property that I was like, holy shit, that looks like a tree structure, right? What, what do you make or what, what is become your understanding of what these things are doing when they're doing these tree breaks and these sort of structures that, you can see on your your film discovering bigfoot you you mm -hmm. highlight some of those and and walk jeff meldrum through the how this could be and how it could be placed there so mm -hmm. what what do you think these things are doing or what do you know that these things mean to the sasquatch I, i've always been very fascinated in understanding what it is that they're doing there it's a story they're literally telling a story that reverberates through history a sasquatch i was just talking about this uh last week, I think in one of my videos, um, a Sasquatch will make a tree break and the tree break, let's say is 20 feet in the air. It's four inches thick and it's pointed at my trailer. Well, that happened the year I dropped my trailer way out in the middle of nowhere. And what's gonna happen is in 30 years, that Sasquatch who was probably, let's say nine, will remember that he did that based on the thickness of the tree, based on the height it was at. And he'll know that that was the day that that trailer got put out there. Literally, it was, it's almost like a thing of acceptance. I have all these breaks. I think it was five breaks I calculated the first year that were definitively for me, 100% in response to me coming into their habitat. And then the year after, I found a ridgeline with like 30 breaks and they're all telling a story. It's bigger, taller, smaller. You know, there's uh, cleaner breaks, weaker breaks. You know, even, even imagine, a 12 year old Sasquatch makes a break that's too high and it's not clean. And it's like, oh, that was that year where I was a little bit egotistical, I was biting off more than I could chew. You know, that attitude is in his break. You know what I mean? There's really a story. And then the next year, he makes a shorter break that's more in his power, right? He goes, that, and then I see I matured. I bit off exactly how much I could chew. My break was much cleaner. And that year, He'll remember too, that's the year that Todd, we made the structure for him. Or Todd brought out that woman that was communicating with Jane and dad said that was okay. And it's for the first time, Jane's coming down and communicating. And man, we've never had that before. So everything tells a story that they'll remember. And I see that. This break over here is that year they, they shot that elk and that pissed us off because they shot it and they killed two and they left one. And, and it represents that. It might even be to the extent where they can touch these breaks. I have expeditioners that are very like, like psychics. They would, you know, they touch something and they feel a hat and they know where the, the kid is. I have people like that going, this, this, there's energy in this. It's telling me something. And, and so there's a story and there's an energy in everything they do. It all matters with, with the structures. It's so clear to me. I mean, they damn well build the things clockwise. 
and then you know uh six big pieces six big ones and five little ones 11 individuals in the group maybe you know maybe a little one's over here maybe this one's there right so it's really uh it, it's very very meaningful these things are these things are designed I, I again i just did a youtube video about that design where i talk about it in the structures where these are brilliant pieces of architecture that are you just and they last 30 40 years these good structures i've seen them build and and they're building them and communicate that's the most important thing the brakes are damn well for us they're right off the trails are for us to see less and i found brakes that are in the bush back country they're not for people and they're very different the story is different because of sasquatch talking to sasquatch whereas when they're on the trails they're pointed at the trails and there's a direction to them or if they don't want you on that trail, they point in opposite up and down the direction. And at the end of that trail is an elk herd. <coughs> if they're elk herd, these brakes are saying, stop coming down this trail. Don't mess with our elk. So <coughs> I clearly see stories, even as ignorant as I am, looking through this little hole, trying to figure out what these incredible beings are doing. Even to me, there's clearly a story, but you won't get it unless you do your research. And that word has been just pounded to me you got to get out there you got to look again and again you got to search again and search again and search again and re 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 before that message comes through it's like learning a new language you just got to bang away at it smash it and be dedicated to it and focus and be obsessed with it and then you'll get that language and it's it's starting to come to me and it's uh it's a it's a wonderful journey so make your own journey of it you must realize these are very intelligent beings how do they evade us so easily you gotta if you start with that they're, if if you know they're real, you go through another door. That's a brand new door. Now they're they can evade, they can move. They're trackers or equilibrium. You have to know they're extremely intelligent, very connected to the earth in beautiful, brilliant ways. I know this is big news. Here, I'll break it on your on your show. I never talked about this publicly. They're the ones that taught the native people their religion. You know the Great Spirit. Yeah, you know the shamans. That's the Sasquatch. Sasquatch means wild teacher wild master wilderness master i was looking for a ceremony that the natives wouldn't do for me because you needed a big powerful shaman the sasquatch performed the ceremony on me they're the ones that taught all this stuff to the native people and i mean all of it the whole great spirit the whole thing they all know the species exists they're at the highest level of connectivity to the wilderness and they even even <clears throat> you know the natives there's this cool thing they they do this walk where they evade where so it goes they go step 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 and what happens is it sounds like you're a deer so when a deer hears step 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 they just think it's a horse or a moose coming right you know who would do that perfectly a sasquatch with a mid tarsal joint when you see a man do it it's kind of weird because we don't have a joint like that so we kind of we have to do like a bounce a sasquatch don't bounce man they put their foot down and stomp it because they have the joint there. They taught that to the natives. And I've seen 50 other examples of that. We're hunting, tracking the, the, the religious beliefs, the connectivity, the spiritual animal rituals. It's all what the teachers taught them, which are Sasquatch, which are the masters of the universe. So pretty, pretty big stuff, right? If, if I'm correct, and I wouldn't talk about it unless I knew I was correct. And I know I've, I've met too many shaman, too many connected with amazing native people they, they all look at me I, when i ask them every single one of them that i asked in the last three years to get this really into my head they'll go absolutely and they smile there's nothing that we didn't learn from the wilderness from these incredible beings nothing they taught us everything and wow that's a new level right they're literally like the religious icons of this beautiful philosophy and the native american and the uh, first nations people their great spirit philosophy and connectivity is beautiful it's, a, it's not so much a religion as a wonderful philosophy of life and connectivity spiritual animals all the connectivity to nature the sasquatch teach it oh man i'm sitting here going ah it's that big it's that big they're that amazing so understand that when you hear a knock or when you see a break understand just you want to because you're so domesticated we're so ignorant man you got to start there you got to be humble they get it they figure it out i can sit here and tell you 50 things about them that blow your mind and and it's not supernatural a wolf follows scent particles right we all know that they can smell they follow it that's not supernatural they can literally just perceive the scent particles in their nose can you imagine if a being could feel those particles with his hand that's what 
a Sasquatch can do, and that's what the best native trackers do. I call it heart tracking. They literally feel those particles that a wolf or a dog can smell. They feel the energy of it, and the Sasquatch taught it to people. I see them do it all the time. So it's just a thousand things like that, and we can do that. I'm learning to do that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's these connectivity and this miracle of nature, that, and they're bringing people back to nature, everything, the best cures, the best solutions for every illness is go back to nature and find a natural way, natural paths, organic, you know what I mean? Sustainability, that stuff is a way of life for Sasquatch. They never left and we need to get back to that. I couldn't agree more. And, and I want to be respectful of your time. There's just a couple of other things that I wanted to touch base on. We've talked a lot about the evidence. We talked about your HD quality video. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it is that we're at this point all these years later, 2022, and we are, it feels like at times we're no closer to proving these things actually exist than we were prior to 1967. And even after 67, when Patty was filmed, mm. why do you think it is that we are where we are with this, this <clears throat> quest to prove that they truly exist and this species is a real species? Because, because we embrace technology so much i have an iphone i have a computer social networking <coughs> technology is literally opposite of wilderness and the more we embrace that technology the more it separates us from the species can you imagine how they think of us we walk around looking at these little things they, they made an episode of star trek about that where people would look at this little thing and it was a game they play and they never look that's everywhere now people never stop you're like addicted to that little phone man it's everything and that's really like insanity, where it's people, kids are cutting themselves and hurt. Like the stuff I see children doing nowadays, we're so, it's, you know, what's got to happen is we've got to stop. We've got to come back. It's too fast. It's too much. And that's what me and my people and so many other people that I'm working with, uh, teachers, colleagues, friends, survivor man, that's what he's all about, is getting us back to nature. And so we just need to start embracing it. It doesn't always have to come to that. We have to get to that right extreme precipice where it's so bad. And then, you know, Boy Scouts are gone. Nobody cares about hiking and tracking skills. You know, hunters, who, who goes and gets their own wild game? You want free range organic? Go get a deer, man. Go harvest it. Who knows how to cut a deer, gut a deer, you know, get, get the meat out to, to, to even sustainably hunt them. These are things that some people know, but it's pretty freaking rare now. So, but that's all going to change. It's all. And, it, and if, if, if it doesn't change until me or somebody like me gets that proof, gets that video, it will come then it's coming. I have, I'm, you want to see me talk about 10 out of 10, honestly, put me on a lie detector test and hit me about, is this discovery coming? I, I know it, I feel it. It's there. They're, they're talking. There's so many powerhouse people involved now. Anna Bachman talking about animal communication, you know, uh, these new people that I can't name names that are coming on expeditions with me that are just like unreal connected and loving nature and getting back to it. So the discovery is so it's here. And it's, I, I just, I, I, I never, you don't know me. But I'll tell you, like I told Survivor Man, we'll get it. We'll get it done. We'll get out. We'll get it. I'll get you within 50 yards of a Sasquatch. Did it. You know, Jeff Meldrum and John, I knew one of them had to see a Sasquatch. It's impossible. I remember my wife at the time going, you can't do it. It's just, you never, it's not going to happen. I come back. I did it. It's not, I could just feel it. And I just know it. And, and, and everything in my life, I've been going through this horrible disaster of this family court thing with my children and an ex-wife and divorce that some of us know about. It's a goddamn debacle and it's atrocious. It's over. I'm a dad again. I got my children back. My family life is settled in and I'm ready. I'm ready. And, and this discovery is happening. You, I can feel your energy. There's something special about you and uh, you need to come out on an expedition with me or somebody trained by me. You need to get your, take your shoes off, take a walk around, drink some wild water, touch the trees, have a few ceremonies. You know what I mean? And just get around and feel that Sasquatch energy and uh, it'll change your whole life. That's wives are pissed when their husbands come out with me the first year and the second year, the wives like get your ass out there because you're a nicer, wonderful man. You have more serenity. You're better in bed. You're a better dad. You know what I mean? These guys come back recharged. Like, what are you doing to these guys? It ain't Viagra. You know what I mean? 
So <laughs> it's I will love definitely and have to. I'll definitely have to do that, Todd, for sure. Before we wrap up, let's. You've talked a little bit about the expeditions. Just give us the the synopsis on what somebody can expect when they come out on an expedition with you, and mm -hmm. sort of give us the the Cliff Notes version of what that looks like, and then we'll just end up with what's next for Todd Stanley moving forward. Yeah, expeditions are seven days, six nights in the backcountry wilderness. I, I pick and choose my people. It's a process we go through, but you just come out with a suitcase and I take care of everything. I pick you up at the airport. I, I take you out, I guide you. You'll see breaks and, and tracks and you'll, you'll hear the story about what's going on because I can't tell you what's happening because when I do my first expedition, that's when the narrative sets. It's not like Discovery Channel and Warner Brothers are asking me to do these movies and they script it. And I, I laugh, Survivor Man taught me this, just write them a script because you know who writes the script is the Sasquatch. They'll decide to come around. I pick people that have good energy because I wanna have that success or people that don't even know about like John Bitternagel. He had special energy away from his science that was beautiful and so does Jeff and so do you. So that's why you're doing so well. I really appreciate what you're doing here for the discovery process of Sasquatch. This is important stuff, man. I know this is, this is fun and you love it. You gotta understand what you do is important. We need to get this word out here. And I'm tremendously grateful for what you do. And, and I just live a wonderful, happy life, taking people out, eating really good, healthy, organic food, connecting to nature, finding your love and your peace. You'll learn about animals and tracking. You'll see all kinds of wildlife or maybe not, but uh, everybody just gets it. Everybody learns. You'll What you will do is you will bleed with me. You'll go out there, you'll bleed, you'll feel the pain. If a bear charges at you, charges us, you'll see who Todd Stanning really is. Will I run away? Or will I stand my ground and take care of it? And you know, the answer is I've taken out honestly over a hundred people now. Half of them are dumbasses from Los Angeles that are film crews and, and twits and everybody comes back safe. All, all of Survivor Man's crew all came back safe. There's a good damn reason for that. I take them in the most dangerous backcountry in the world, wild grizzly bears, black bears, mountain lions, wolves, everything's out there. It's a very healthy ecosystem. And they all come home safe. And there's a damn good reason for that. I've been trained by the Northern Cree Indians and, uh, and just even, you know, with, the, with hunters and guides and other people that I've, that I've dealt with, I'm survivor man and John Benernagel have trained me, you know? So, and I have the experience, you know, thousands and thousands of days in the back country, love and passion for it. And you'll, you'll see that and feel it. Like I know you can see and feel it right now on expedition with me. That's awesome, man. I'll leave the last word to you. If you could just tell the audience, what, what's the, the big picture for you that you want to leave with the audience about Sasquatch, this discovery, and what's next for Todd Standing in this, in this journey? It's, it's, it's just, it's going to happen. The discovery is here. I wake up every day excited to move forward for it. And, uh, and I, I don't, it's, there's no plan. Again, I can't plan it. As my teachers are calling to me. My teachers are, are, are manifesting these things in my lives in these beautiful ways. And I'm just receptive to it and I'm open to it. And uh, if you can help, watch my YouTube videos, watch the movie. It's on, it's actually on YouTube now. It's on Netflix and Amazon Prime. I think it's still on Amazon. Watch the movie, watch those Survivor Man Bigfoots with me in them. I can account for all the stuff that happened there. That's totally legit. Survivor Man's amazing. I'm putting out YouTube videos like crazy and uh, just, uh, you know, you know what I'd ask everybody to do? Don't believe, know it. Know the discovery's happening and, and know it's going to happen in a wonderful way. Not some ass with the, shooting one with the body. Those people have no idea. They're, they're set for failure. It's so bad. You can't do it that way. I want some beautiful, awesome person to go out there like Snow White with birds landing on them and butterflies on their head and Sasquatch walk up and sit down beside them and go, oh, wow, you're real. That's who I'm looking for. Again, I'm looking for who's Neo. Is it you? Who is it? Because I don't know, but I'm looking and I want them. Morpheus is ready and I'll give you that blue pill and let's go down that path and uh, let's work and fight for this discovery. Question it, you know, butt heads with people about it. Have discuss, discuss, make peace with people. Talk about it. it I'm, not a, I'm not afraid. Bring all the truth out. Have discussions. Let's talk about it. Let's, uh, let's work for this discovery and uh, all together, all of us, let's discover Bigfoot and, and, and make it happen. And it's coming. I, I know it guaranteed it's coming. Well, I will definitely link to everything that Todd has mentioned in the episode tonight. So you guys can go check everything out. I've watched discovering Bigfoot many times and I'm planning on doing it again with dinner tonight because I want to refresh my memory <laughs> on some of the things we talked about. Todd, I can't thank you enough for your time, man, and coming on the show. I've really enjoyed talking to you and I really appreciate you being a guest on. 
Let's do it again. I'm looking forward to it.